Hispania, Latin, his Pania was the Roman name for the Iberian Peninsula and its provinces. Under the Republic, Hispania was divided into two provinces, Hispania Citerior and Hispania Ulterior. During the Principate, Hispania Ulterior was divided into two new provinces, Baetica and Lusitania, while Hispania Citerior was renamed Hispania Terraconensis. Subsequently, the western part of Terraconensis was split off, first as Hispania Nova, later renamed Galicia or Galicia, whence modern Galicia. From Diocletian's Tetrarchy AD 284 onwards, the south of remaining Terraconensis was again split off as Carthaginensis, and probably then too the Balearic Islands and all the resulting provinces formed one civil diocese under the Vicarius for the Hispaniae that is, the Celtic provinces. The name, Hispania, was also used in the period of Visigothic rule. The modern place names Spain and Hispaniola are both derived from Hispania. Etymology The origin of the word Hispania is much disputed and the evidence for the various speculations are based merely upon what are at best mere resemblances, likely to be accidental, and suspect supporting evidence. One theory holds it to be of Punic derivation, from the Phoenician language of colonizing Carthage. Specifically, it may derive from a Punic cognate of Hebrew y spi meaning, island of the hyrax, or island of the hare, or island of the rabbit. Phoenician Punic and Hebrew are both Canaanite languages and therefore closely related to each other. Some Roman coins of the Emperor Hadrian, born in Hispania, depict Hispania and a rabbit. Others derive the word from Phoenician span, meaning hidden, and make it indicate a hidden, that is, a remote, or far distant land. Another theory, proposed by the etymologist Eric Partridge in his work Origins, is that it is of Iberian derivation and that it is to be found in the pre-Roman name for Seville, Hispalis, which strongly hints at an ancient name for the country of asterisk Hispa, an Iberian or Celtic root whose meaning is now lost. Isidore of Sevilla considered Hispania derived from Hispalis. Hispalis may alternatively derive from Heliopolis Greek for city of the sun. According to Manuel Pellicer Catalan, the name derives from Phoenician spal, lowland, rendering this explanation of Hispania dubious. Occasionally Hispania was called Hesperia Ultima, the last western land, in Greek, by Roman writers, since the name Hesperia had already been used by the Greeks to indicate the Italian peninsula. Another theory holds that the name derives from ez pana, the Basque word for border, or edge, thus meaning the farthest area or place. During antiquity and Middle Ages, the literary texts derive the term Hispania from an eponymous hero named Hispan, who is mentioned for the first time in the work of the Roman historian Gnaeus Pompeius Trogus, in the 1st century BC. Although, Hispania, is the Latin root for the modern name, Spain. Substituting Spanish for Hispanicus or Hispanic, or Spain for Hispania, should be done carefully and taking into account the correct context. The Historia de España, the History of Spain, written on the initiative of Alfonso X of Castile, El Sabio, the Wise, between 1260 and 1274, during the reconquest of Spain, is believed to be the first extended history of Spain in Old Spanish using the words, España, Spain and Españoles Spanish to refer to medieval Hispania. The use of Latin Hispania, Castilian España, Catalan España, and French Espain, between others, to refer to Roman Hispania or Visigothic Hispania was common throughout all the late Middle Ages. A document dated 1292 mentions the names of foreigners from medieval Spain as Gracian de Spain, Latin expressions using Hispania, or Hispaniae, like Omnes Rigs Hispaniae, are used often in the Middle Ages at the same time as the emerging Spain Romance languages during the Reconquista use the Romance version interchangeably. In James' first chronicle Libra dels Fets, written between 1208 and 1276, there are many instances of this, when it talks about the different kings. Los V Regnus de España. The Five Kingdoms of Spain when it talks about a military fort built by the Christians saying that it is de los mailers de España, from the best of Spain, when it declared that Catalonia, one of the integral parts of the crown of Aragon, is 
Lo Mailer Regna d'Espagne, El Pus Honrat, El Pus Noble. The best kingdom of Spain, the most honest, the most noble. When it talks about the conflict that has existed for long, entre los Serenes y los Cristians, en España, between Saracens and Christians, in Spain, since the borders of modern Spain do not coincide with those of the Roman province of Hispania or of the Visigothic Kingdom, it is important to understand the context of medieval Spain versus modern Spain. The Latin term Hispania, often used during antiquity and the Low Middle Ages as a geographical name, starts to be used also with political connotations, as shown in the expression, Laos Hispaniae, praise to Hispania, to describe the history of the peoples of the Iberian Peninsula of Isidore of Seville's. Historia de Regibus Gathorum, Vandalorum et Suvorum. You are, O Spain, holy and always happy mother of princes and peoples, the most beautiful of all the lands that extend far from the west to India. You, by right, are now the queen of all provinces, from whom the lights are given not only the sunset, but also the east. You are the honor and ornament of the orb and the most illustrious portion of the earth. And for this reason, long ago, the Golden Rome desired you, in modern history, Spain and Spanish have become increasingly associated with the Kingdom of Spain alone, although this process took several centuries. After the union of the Central Peninsular Kingdom of Castile with the Eastern Peninsular Kingdom of Aragon in the 15th century under the Catholic monarchs in 1492, only Navarra and Portugal were left to complete the whole peninsula under one monarchy. Navarre followed soon after in 1512, and Portugal in 1580. During this time, the concept of Spain was still unchanged. The King of Portugal would protest energetically when during a public act King Fernando talked about the crown of Spain. This sentiment was also shared by the Portuguese people, as shown by who is considered Portugal's and Portuguese language's greatest poet, Luís de Camos, when in 1572 he defined the Portuguese people as uma gente fortíssima de Espana, a very strong people of Spain. It was after the independence of Portugal in 1640 when the concept of Spain started to shift and be applied to all the peninsula except Portugal. Even so, Portugal would still complain when the terms, Crown of Spain, or Monarchy of Spain, were still used in the 18th century with the Treaty of Utrecht. <laughs> Pre-Roman history The Iberian Peninsula has long been inhabited, first by early hominids such as Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis and Homo antecessor. In the Paleolithic period, the Neanderthals entered Iberia and eventually took refuge from the advancing migrations of modern humans. In the 40th millennium BC, during the Upper Paleolithic and the Last Ice Age, the first large settlement of Europe by modern humans occurred. These were nomadic hunter-gatherers originating on the steppes of Central Asia. When the last ice age reached its maximum extent, during the 30th millennium BC, these modern humans took refuge in southern Europe, namely in Iberia, after retreating through southern France. In the millennia that followed, the Neanderthals became extinct and local modern human cultures thrived, producing prehistoric art such as that found in Larbreda Cave and in the Coa Valley. In the Mesolithic period, beginning in the 10th millennium BC, the Alarid Oscillation occurred. This was an interstadial deglaciation that lessened the harsh conditions of the Ice Age. The populations sheltered in Iberian Peninsula descendants of the Cro -Magnon migrated and recolonized all of Western Europe. In this period one finds the Azilian culture in southern France and northern Iberia to the mouth of the Douro River, as well as the Moog culture in the Tagus Valley. The Neolithic brought changes to the human landscape of Iberia from the 5th millennium BC onwards, with the development of agriculture and the beginning of the European megalith culture. This spread to most of Europe and had one of its oldest and main centers in the territory of modern Portugal, as well as the Chalcolithic and Beaker cultures. During the 1st millennium BC, in the Bronze Age, the first wave of migrations into Iberia of speakers of Indo-European languages occurred. These were later 7th and 5th centuries BC followed by others that can be identified as Celts. Eventually urban cultures developed in southern Iberia, such as Tartessos, influenced by the Phoenician colonization of coastal Mediterranean Iberia, with strong competition from the Greek colonization. These two processes defined Iberia's cultural landscape, Mediterranean towards the southeast and continental in the northwest. 
Topic: Languages. Latin was the official language of Hispania during the Rome's more than 600 years of rule, and by the empire's end in Hispania around 460 AD, all the original Iberian languages, except the ancestor of modern Basque, were extinct. Even after the fall of Rome and the invasion of the Germanic Visigoths and Subi, Latin was spoken by nearly all of the population, but in its common form known as Vulgar Latin, and the regional changes which led to the modern Iberian Romance languages had already begun. Topic. Carthaginian Hispania After its defeat by the Romans in the First Punic War 264 BC to 241 BC, Carthage compensated for its loss of Sicily by rebuilding a commercial empire in Hispania. The major part of the Punic Wars, fought between the Punic Carthaginians and the Romans, was fought on the Iberian Peninsula. Carthage gave control of the Iberian Peninsula and much of its empire to Rome in 201 BC as part of the peace treaty after its defeat in the Second Punic War, and Rome completed its replacement of Carthage as the dominant power in the Mediterranean area. By then the Romans had adopted the Carthaginian name, Romanized first as Ispania. The term later received an H, much like what happened with Hibernia, and was pluralized as Hispaniae, as had been done with the three Gauls. Topic. Roman Hispania Roman armies invaded the Iberian Peninsula in 218 BC and used it as a training ground for officers and as a proving ground for tactics during campaigns against the Carthaginians, the Iberians, the Lusitanians, the Galicians and other Celts. It was not until 19 BC that the Roman Emperor Augustus R. 27 BC AD 14 was able to complete the conquest see Cantabrian Wars. Until then, much of Hispania remained autonomous. Romanization proceeded quickly in some regions where we have references to the Tagati, and very slowly in others, after the time of Augustus, and Hispania was divided into three separately governed provinces nine provinces by the 4th century. More importantly, Hispania was for 500 years part of a cosmopolitan world empire bound together by law, language, and the Roman road. But the impact of Hispania in the newcomers was also big. Caesar wrote on the civil wars that the soldiers from the Second Legion had become Hispanicized and regarded themselves as Hispanici. Some of the peninsula's population were admitted into the Roman aristocratic class and they participated in governing Hispania and the Roman Empire, although there was a native aristocracy class who ruled each local tribe. The Latifundia sing, Latifundium, large estates controlled by the aristocracy, were superimposed on the existing Iberian landholding system. The Romans improved existing cities, such as Lisbon Alisipo, and Tarragona Terico, established Zaragoza Caesaragusta, Merida, Augusta Merida and Valencia Valentia, and reduced other native cities to mere villages. The peninsula's economy expanded under Roman tutelage. Hispania served as a granary and a major source of metals for the Roman market, and its harbors exported gold, tin, silver, lead, wool, wheat, olive oil, wine, fish, and garum. Agricultural production increased with the introduction of irrigation projects, some of which remain in use today. The Romanized Iberian populations and the Iberian-born descendants of Roman soldiers and colonists had all achieved the status of full Roman citizenship by the end of the first century. The emperors Trajan R. 98 Hadrian R. 117 and Theodosius were of Hispanic origin. The Iberian denarii, also called Argentum Ossens by Roman soldiers, circulated until the 1st century BC, after which it was replaced by Roman coins. Hispania was separated into two provinces in 197 BC, each ruled by a praetor, Hispania Siderior, Hither Hispania, and Hispania Ulterior, Farther Hispania. The long wars of conquest lasted two centuries, and only by the time of Augustus did Rome manage to control Hispania Ulterior. Hispania was divided into three provinces in the 1st century BC. In the 4th century, Latinius Pacitus Drepanius, a Gallic rhetorician, dedicated part of his work to the depiction of the geography, climate and inhabitants of the peninsula, writing, This Hispania produces tough soldiers, very skilled captains, prolific speakers, luminous bards. It is a mother of judges and princes, it has given Trajan, Hadrian, and Theodosius to the empire. 
With time, the name Hispania was used to describe the collective names of the Iberian Peninsula kingdoms of the Middle Ages, which came to designate all of the Iberian Peninsula plus the Balearic Islands. The Hispaniae During the first stages of Romanization, the peninsula was divided in two by the Romans for administrative purposes. The closest one to Rome was called Citerior and the more remote one Ulterior. The frontier between both was a sinuous line which ran from Cartago Nova now Cartagena to the Cantabrian Sea. Hispania Ulterior comprised what are now Andalusia, Portugal, Extremadura, Leon, a great portion of the former Castilla la Vieja, Galicia, Asturias, and the Basque Country. Hispania Citerior comprised the eastern part of former Castilla la Vieja, and what are now Aragon, Valencia, Catalonia, and a major part of former Castilla la Nueva. In 27 BC, the general and politician Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa divided Hispania into three parts, namely dividing Hispania Ulterior into Baetica basically Andalusia and Lusitania including Galicia and Asturias and attaching Chantabria and the Basque Country to Hispania Citerior. The Emperor Augustus in that same year returned to make a new division leaving the provinces as follows Provincia Hispania Ulterior Baetica or Hispania Baetica, whose capital was Corduba, presently Córdoba. It included a little less territory than present-day Andalusia. Since modern Almeria and a great portion of what today is Granada and Jaén were left outside—plus the southern zone of present-day Badajoz. The river Anas or Anas Guadiana, from Wadi Anas separated Hispania Baetica from Lusitania. Provincia Hispania Ulterior Lusitania, Lusitania whose capital was Emerita Augusta now Merida, and without Galicia and Asturias. Provincia Hispania Citerior or Terraconensis, whose capital was Terraco Tarragona. After gaining maximum importance this province was simply known as Terraconensis and it comprised Galicia modern Galicia and northern Portugal and Asturias. In AD 69, the province of Mauritania Tingitana was incorporated into the Diocesis Hispaniorum. By the 3rd century, the Emperor Caracalla made a new division which lasted only a short time. He split Hispania Siderior again into two parts, creating the new provinces Provincia Hispania Nova Siderior and Asturii Calisiae. In the year 238, the unified province Terraconensis or Hispania Siderior was re established. In the 3rd century, under the soldier emperors, Hispania Nova the northwestern corner of Spain was split off from Terraconensis, as a small province but the home of the only permanent legion is Hispania, Legio VII Gemina. After Diocletian's Tetrarchy reform in AD 293, the new Dioecesis Hispaniae became one of the four dioceses—governed by a vicarius of the Praetorian Prefecture of Gaul also comprising the provinces of Gaul, Germania and Britannia, after the abolition of the imperial tetrarchs under the Western Emperor in Rome itself, later Ravenna. The diocese, with capital at Emerita Augusta modern Merida, comprised the five peninsular Iberian provinces Baetica, Galicia and Lusitania, each under a governor styled Consularis, and Carthaginiensis, Terraconensis, each under a Prises, the Insuli Baleares and the North African province of Mauritania Tingitana. Christianity was introduced into Hispania in the 1st century and it became popular in the cities in the 2nd century. Little headway was made in the countryside, however, until the late 4th century, by which time Christianity was the official religion of the Roman Empire. Some heretical sects emerged in Hispania, most notably Priscillianism, but overall the local bishops remained subordinate to the Pope. Bishops who had official civil as well as ecclesiastical status in the late empire continued to exercise their authority to maintain order when civil governments broke down there in the 5th century. The Council of Bishops became an important instrument of stability during the ascendancy of the Visigoths. The last vestiges of Roman rule ended in 472. Topic: <laughs> Germanic Hispania. The undoing of Roman Spain was the result of four tribes crossing the Rhine New Year's Eve 407. After three years of depredation and wandering about northern and western Gaul the Germanic Buri, Suevi and Vandals, together with the Sarmatian Alans moved into Iberia in September or October 409 at the request of Gerontius a Roman usurper. Thus began the history of the end of Roman Spain which came in 472. 
The Suevi established a kingdom in Galicia in what is today modern Galicia and northern Portugal. The Alans' allies, the Hasdingi Vandals, also established a kingdom in another part of Galicia. The Alans established a kingdom in Lusitania, modern Alentejo and Algarve, in Portugal. The Salingi Vandals briefly occupied parts of South Iberia in the province of Baetica. In an effort to retrieve the region the Western Roman Emperor, Honorius R. 395 promised the Visigoths a home in southwest Gaul if they destroyed the invaders in Spain. They all but wiped out the Salingi and Alans. The remnant joined the Asding Vandals who had settled first in the northwest with the Sueves but south to Baetica. It is a mystery why the Visigoths were recalled by Patrician Constantius who in 418 married Honorius' sister who had been married briefly to the Visigothic king Atolf. The Visigoths, the remnants of the two tribes who joined them and the Sueves were confined to a small area in the northwest of the peninsula. The diocese may even have been re-established with the capital at Merida in 418. Kulikovsky, M. The Career of the Comes Hispanorum Asterius, Phoenix, 2000A, 54-123-141. The Roman attempt under General Castorius to dislodge the Vandals from Cordoba failed in 422. The Vandals and Alans crossed over to North Africa in 429, an event which is considered to have been decisive in hastening the decline of the Western Empire. However their departure allowed the Romans to recover 90% of the Iberian Peninsula until 439. After the departure of the Vandals only the Sueves remained in a northwest corner of the peninsula. Roman rule which had survived in the eastern quadrant was restored over most of Iberia until the Sueves occupied Merida in 439, a move which coincides to the Vandal occupation of Carthage late the same year. Rome made attempts to restore control in 446 and 458. Success was temporary. After the death of Emperor Majorian in 461 Roman authority collapsed except in Terraconensis the northeastern quadrant of the peninsula. The Visigoths, a Germanic people, whose kingdom was located in southwest Gaul, took the province when they occupied Tarragona in 472. They also confined the Sueves who had ruled most of the region to Galicia and northern Portugal. In 484 the Visigoths established Toledo as the capital of their kingdom. Successive Visigothic kings ruled Hispania as patricians who held imperial commissions to govern in the name of the Roman Emperor. In 585 the Visigoths conquered the Subic Kingdom of Galicia, and thus controlled almost all of Hispania. A century later, taking advantage of a struggle for the throne between the Visigothic kings Agila and Athanagild, the eastern emperor Justinian I sent an army under the command of Liberius to take back the peninsula from the Visigoths. This short-lived reconquest covered only a small strip of land along the Mediterranean coast roughly corresponding to the ancient province of Baetica, known as Spania. Under the Visigoths' culture was not as highly developed as it had been under Roman rule, when a goal of higher education had been to prepare gentlemen to take their places in municipal and imperial administration. With the collapse of the imperial administrative superstructure above the provincial level which was practically moribund the task of maintaining formal education and government shifted to the church from the old ruling class of educated aristocrats and gentry. The clergy for the most part emerged as the qualified personnel to manage higher administration in concert with local powerful notables who gradually displaced the old town councils. As elsewhere in early medieval Europe, the church in Hispania stood as society's most cohesive institution. The Visigoths are also responsible for the introduction of mainstream Christianity to the Iberian Peninsula. The earliest representation of Christ in Spanish religious art can be found in a Visigothic hermitage, Santa Maria de Lara. It also embodied the continuity of Roman order. Romans continued to run the civil administration and Latin continued to be the language of government and of commerce on behalf of the Visigoths, E.A. Thompson, The Visigoths in Spain, 1969 pp. 114-131. Religion was the most persistent source of friction between the Roman Catholic Romans and their Aryan Visigothic overlords, whom the former considered heretical. At times this tension invited open rebellion, and restive factions within the Visigothic aristocracy exploited it to weaken the monarchy. In 589, Ricard, a Visigothic ruler, renounced his Arianism before the Council of Bishops at Toledo and accepted Catholicism, thus assuring an alliance between the Visigothic monarchy and the Romans. 
This alliance would not mark the last time in the history of the peninsula that political unity would be sought through religious unity. Court ceremonials, from Constantinople, that proclaimed the imperial sovereignty and unity of the Visigothic state were introduced at Toledo. Still, civil war, royal assassinations, and usurpation were commonplace, and warlords and great landholders assumed wide discretionary powers. Bloody family feuds went unchecked. The Visigoths had acquired and cultivated the apparatus of the Roman state but not the ability to make it operate to their advantage. In the absence of a well-defined hereditary system of succession to the throne, rival factions encouraged foreign intervention by the Greeks, the Franks, and finally the Muslims in internal disputes and in royal elections. According to Isidore of Seville, it is with the Visigothic domination of the zone that the idea of a peninsular unity is sought after, and the phrase Mother Hispania is first spoken. Up to that date, Hispania designated all of the peninsula's lands. In Historia Gothorum, the Visigoth Suanila appears as the first monarch where Hispania is dealt with as a Gothic nation. <inaudible> <inaudible> Muslim conquest and Christian reconquest of Hispania I greet you, O King of Al-Andalus, she that was called Hispania by the ancients. The North African Muslims, referred to as Moors, conquered Hispania, Aspania Arabic, Isbania 711-719, and called the area they controlled Al-Andalus. In the chronicles and documents of the High Middle Ages the terms derived from Hispania, Spania, Espana or Espana continued to be used by the Christians but only in reference to Muslim-controlled areas. King Alfonso I of Aragon says in his documents that he reigns over Pamplona, Aragon, Sabrarb and Ribajorza, and that when in 1126 he made an expedition to Malaga he went to the lands of España. In the last years of the 12th century the whole Iberian Peninsula, Muslim and Christian, became known as Spain, España, España or Espana and the denomination, the Five Kingdoms of Spain became used to refer to the Muslim Kingdom of Granada and the Christian Kingdoms of Aragon, Castile, Portugal, and Navarre. Economy Before the Punic Wars, Hispania was a land with much untapped mineral and agricultural wealth, limited by the primitive subsistence economies of her native peoples outside of a few trading ports along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Occupations by the Carthaginians and then by the Romans for her abundant silver deposits developed Hispania into a thriving multifaceted economy. Several metals, olives, oil from Baetica, salted fish and garum, and wines were some of the goods produced in Hispania and traded throughout the empire. The gold mining was the most important activity in the northwest parts of the peninsula. This activity is attested in archaeological sites as Las Medulas Spain and Casillas Ponte de Lima, Portugal. Topic. Climate Unusually high precipitation levels were during the so-called Iberian Roman humid period. The Roman Spain experienced its three phases, the most humid interval in 550–190 BC, an arid interval in 190 BC–150 AD and another humid period in 150–350. In 134 BC the army of Scipio Aemilianus in Spain had to march at night due to extreme heat, when some of its horses and mules died of thirst even though earlier, in 181 BC, heavy spring rains prevented the Celtiberians from relieving the Roman siege of Contrebia. Through the 2nd century AD warm temperatures dominated particularly in the Austrian mountains along the north coast, punctuated by further cool spells from c. 155 to 180. After about 200 the temperatures fluctuated, trending toward cool. Topic. Sources and references This article incorporates public domain material from the Library of Congress Country Studies website http colon slash slash liquib2.loc.gov slash frd slash cs slash Modern sources in Spanish and Portuguese Altamira y Crevia, Rafael Historia de España y de la Civilización Española. Tomo i Barcelona, 1900. 
Altamira was a professor at the University of Oviedo, a member of the Royal Academy of History, of the Geographic Society of Lisbon, and of the Instituto de Coimbra, in Spanish. Aznar, José Camón, Las Artes y los Pueblos de la España Primitiva. Editorial Espasa Calpa, S.A. Madrid, 1954. Camón was a professor at the University of Madrid, in Spanish. Bosch Gimpera, Pedro, Aguado Blé, Pedro, and Ferrandes, José. Historia de España. España Romana, I, created under the direction of Ramón Menéndez Pidal. Editorial Espasa Calpa S.A., Madrid 1935. In Spanish, Garcia y Bolito, Antonio, España y los Españoles Hais dos Mil Años Según la Geografía de Estrabón. Colección Austral de Espasa Calpa S.A., Madrid 1945 First edition 8 XI 1945. Garcia y Bolito was an archaeologist and a professor at the University of Madrid, in Spanish, Matoso, José Dir, Historia de Portugal. Primero volume, Antes de Portugal, Lisboa, Circulo de Litores, 1992. In Portuguese, Melon, Amando, Geografia Historica Española Editorial Volvtad, S.A., Tomo Primero, volume. I. Siri e Madrid 1928. Mellon was a member of the Royal Geographical Society of Madrid and a professor of geography at the Universities of Valladolid and Madrid, in Spanish. Pellin, José R., Diccionario Espasa y Burros. Espasa Calpa S.A. Madrid 2001. In Spanish. Urbieto Arteta, Antonio, Historia Ilustrada de España, Volumen 2. Editorial Debate, Madrid 1994. In Spanish. El Hausen Helal Ariakan, 2009, La Ciudad Batica Durante la Antigüedad Tardía. Persistencias y Mataciones Locales en Relación con la Realidad Urbana del Mediterráneo y del Atlántico, Tesis Doctoral, Universidad de Granada, Granada. Other modern sources This article draws heavily on the corresponding article in the Spanish-language Wikipedia, which was accessed in the version of 27 February 2005. Westermann Grosser Atlas zur Weltgeschichte in German Hispania Topic. Classical sources The Notitia Dignitatum C. AD 400, one edition online is http colon slash slash www.intratext.com slash ix slash lot 0212 slash underscore pj.htm hash 1 wj closing parenthesis. Other classical sources have been accessed secondhand. See references above. Strabo, Geographica. Book 3, Iberia, written between the years 29 and 7 BC and touched up in AD 18. The most prestigious and widely used edition is Karl Müller's, published in Paris at the end of the 19th century, one volume, with two columns, Greek and Latin. The most reputed French translation is Tardieu, Paris 1886. The most reputed English translation with Greek text is H. L. Jones, volume 18, London 1917 FF, N. D. London 1931 FF. Ptolemy, Greek astronomer of the second century, Geographicae Hyphagesis, Geographic Guidebook. Pacatus, Gallic rhetorician, directed a panegyric on Hispania to the Emperor Theodosius I in 389, which he read to the Senate. Paulus Orosius, 390 to 418, historian, follower of Saint Augustine, and author of Historiae Adversus Paganos, the first Christian universal history, and of Hispania Universa, an historical guide translated into Anglo-Saxon by Alfred the Great and into Arabic by Abd ar Rahman III. Lucius Aeneas Florus, between first and second century, Compendium of Roman History and Epitome of the History of Titus Livius, Livy. The relevant texts of Livy have been lost, but we can read them via Floris. Trogus Pompeius. Believed to be a Gaul with Roman citizenship. Historia Universal written in Latin in the times of Augustus Caesar. Titus Livius Livy 59 BC to 17 BC. A Flat Urba Candida, Book CXLII of Livy's surviving work. Neo-modern references 
E. Hubner, La Arqueología de España, Barcelona, 1888. E. S. Bouchier, Spain under the Roman Empire, Oxford, 1914. Topic. See also. Topic. References. Topic. External links. Detailed map of the pre-Roman peoples of Iberia around 200 BC. Hispania, a map of Roman Spain and Portugal. Roman buildings in Barcelona. Amphorae ex Hispania.